Hey there, it's Jimmy again, and here we are in the junkyard. It's a fantastically beautiful day here in uh, late October. Um, and yeah, this is very cool what we found today. But please, first, subscribe and like, and turn your notifications on so that you can be notified whenever I find something else that's interesting. So what do we have? This is a Pontiac Le Mans. Not the exciting one from the 60s, but the rather sad sack 1980s, or actually in this case, a 1992 version. Yeah. So, uh, oh, I don't know if this is, I don't know if there's any greater name debasement than the Pontiac Le Mans. Certainly to GM fans, there, there wasn't. This is, uh, but it's still, it's a very interesting find. So if you know nothing about this car, this was originally an Opel Cadet. So back in the early eighties, this was a Cadet, uh, built by Opel all over Europe. Uh, well, built by Opel in Germany, sold as the Opel and as a Vauxhall in England and was pretty much a Volkswagen Golf competitor and pretty successful. So. Over here, though, we didn't have it. We had the Chevette and the Pontiac T1000, um, which was, I don't know, I guess some people liked them. Not the greatest car in the world, but, you know, whatever, they did the job. So when that finally ended in the late 80s, Pontiac leveraged their Daewoo arm in Korea and sent the Opal tooling to them and had them continue to build the Cadet, which was now replaced, brought it to the U.S. and renamed it the Le Mans as their entry-level uh, subcompact car. Came in a couple different trims. This is the three-door hatchback. There was also a four-door sedan. And I believe there was a five-door hatchback, but that may have just been in Canada. I'm not sure. I don't know if I've seen one in the US. But like I said, this is a 92. Uh, tenth letter in the VIN is an N, so definitely 92. Um, and this is uh, kind of the value leader one. I think it was the SE. This is the bottom of the line entry-level what you would have won on the Price is Right if you were the successful winner of the Showcase Showdown. So uh, let's, let's check it out, right? In 83, this was a, or in the early 80s when the Cadet came out, this is a pretty uh, advanced shape, pretty aerodynamic. By the late 80s, eh, it was kind of meh. But um, at least it's an interesting color, right? Kind of a nice bright sky blue with a gray bumpers or silver gray bumpers trim and this extremely snazzy pink stripe, which I do not think was factory, but may have been dealer installed. So that's kind of interesting. Obviously it's a hatchback, has a high mounted brake light, has these upright uh, turn and uh, brake lights. Where were the, oh, backup lights were down here on the bumper. And then you had this long black trim panel here. Le Mans, uh, Pontiac Arrowhead, the Le Mans logo would have been right there. Yeah. And let's see, it's walking around the front. This is, oh, on the side. So you had a, you know, definite hatchback, obviously. This, there was a kind of a black vent grill type thing, which, does it go in? No, I think it's purely decorative. So those are missing on this car. This rear window is totally fixed, doesn't pop out. And uh, what else we got going on? Got these, it's a Pontiac, so you had some ribbing. The budget didn't allow for any, you know, side cladding, which is probably a good thing. You had uh, a Lamar logo here, Pontiac Arrowhead here, and this super plastic front grille. At least you had Arrow headlights by 92. And then here you go. The overhead cam, 1.6 liter, I believe. Four cylinder, producing something about 74, maybe 76 horsepower. Um, got the GM logo here. And the Daewoo logo here, because like I said, this is Hecho in Korea. Here's the body tag, it's sort of interesting. This one did have AC, which is nice. Got a Fram filter, there's a distributor, and this engine is still pretty complete. I guess there's not much call for Pontiac Le Mans engines anymore. Um, certainly not of uh, this version anyway, maybe the old uh, V8 ones from the 60s. So. Yeah, that's, that's under the hood. Not super exciting. It's pretty much your standard front wheel drive transverse um, layout. So let's take a look. Let's open the back hatch and take a look and then we'll go look inside. We'll figure out how many miles are on this thing. Cause I mean, this it made it what, 31 years. So that's not bad at all. It's a pretty good result. Look at that. The hoods, the, the rear hatch struts still work. That's impressive. Although are they original? No, I don't think they're original. I think they're aftermarket, or at least the one. Uh, I don't know. Can't tell. I don't think they're original, though. But 
anyway, at least somebody went to the trouble of replacing them, so it makes it easier for me. I don't have to balance the thing on my head. Back here, we've got the hubcaps, which are super plastic Pontiac items. Not too exciting. And then you had a spare tire, and that's about it. There was a provision here for a, you know, a flappy cargo panel uh, luggage cover thing. And did the rear seat fold down? Yes, it did. Whole thing at once, so. There you go. There's a sticker on the back here. Something in Korea and it says for Le Mans. So they uh, they definitely built the whole thing in Korea. So that's kind of, that's interesting. Um, I mean, that does happen. Manufacturers are worldwide, they're global. So they do something, pack up the tooling and send it elsewhere, especially when they own plants in other places. So let's see what we have here. We have oh, tempered safety glass, that's good. And this, says first place finish. I don't know what that means. Anyway, here's the door panel. It could not be more vinyl covered. The whole thing is vinyl plastic, but at least, you know, it's still attached and it hasn't broken. You had a manual side view mirror, but the mirror is sadly gone, but that's easy to control right there. And then this, the dashboard's pretty much straight out of the opal. So what do we have? We have the lights in the upper left. So very different from any other GM car sold in the US. Knee bolster down here. You have this very European looking stock, which I think is, was it aftermarket? Is it cruise control? I don't think it's one that had a cruise control standard, but it looks like it. So I think that's an aftermarket edition. This would have been the signals, left, right. Again, kind of Euro looking. And then the wipers are on the stock. Hazard lights up here. You got a rear defroster, that's kind of nice. Two vents and the middle just have the Le Mans logo. And here we had, yeah, it did have AC, so pretty nice. I don't think it was standard, it must have been an option. And you have this little rotator here for the air uh, temperature. Same with the uh, fan, ashtray, cigarette lighter. And this is, get this, it's only a four speed. So a four speed manual, the value leader SE did only get the four. The five apparently was an option, which the Spire did not select. Uh, it was standard on the next trim level up though. Or you could get an automatic, which would be pretty sad here in the Rocky Mountain region. You have the Lamal logo on the floor mat, which is nice, and a wheel without an airbag. Well, yeah, 92 is just the advent of the airbag. So in this case, you had these, the seat belts that, you know, ran around the door frame, kind of a motorized my steel, which everybody sort of hated with the separate lap belt that people either did or did not use. And uh, let's check out the dash. So. It had a pretty sad looking interface there with nothing on the right at all but the Pontiac logo. But check it out on the left, 190,662 miles. That does not suck for this car, which universally is derided. So not too shabby. In the middle, you got fuel and temp, and then you got some idiot lights there also. Not, not terrible, and that's actually better than I expected, except for the blank gauge on the right is just kind of sad. This one, well, it's obviously got sun risers. And this one had a sunroof, but this is not factor. This is just a pop-out one that was cut and put in. And somebody actually took that, so that's interesting. You had a, kind of a cloth, well, it is a cloth seat, which held up shockingly good for this performance, 200,000 miles. There was not a rip or a tear anywhere. The bolster is a little sagging, but that's not, that's not bad, really. And the, the driver's seat doesn't look in any worse shape than the passenger seat. This color is probably not the greatest for an economy car. And um, this seat's not really in, so. Back is just a completely featureless bench. But you did have an ashtray on that side. And on this side, there was an ashtray as well. So ashtrays on both sides. But no way to open the windows. Looks like decent headroom though. The headliner is gone. But yeah, I don't know. This is... Uh, this is, you know, this is probably better than I expected, but manufactured by Daewoo Motor, Republic of Korea. I, I don't, I don't know. I can't love this car, but I, I can't love it. I can maybe, I can't even like it. I can respect it, so I will respect it. For 190,000 miles, I'll, res I'll respect anything. That's, uh, it got someone to work in back for a long time. Did a good job. And then I guess it expired since there really isn't much significant body damage on this thing that wasn't caused by the yard here so anyway please do subscribe if you liked what you saw and uh hit like and ask to be notified when i do new ones and i will make sure to do so 
Thank you very much, and I appreciate you watching. Take it easy. Bye.